Good morning, Castaic. My name is Torn Rikers. And I'm Xander Grable. And welcome back to our second episode of Good Morning Castaic. It's been a while since our last episode, but we're back and better than ever. Get ready, because Good Morning Castaic starts right now. Welcome back to our second episode of Good Morning Castaic. On today's show, we'll introduce a segment on our campus supervisors, a close-up on world news, a spotlight on the theater production team, a live broadcast from Henry Sundell, and an entertainment report on upcoming movies and the Oscars. But before we get started, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. This week's episode is going to be jam-packed full of exciting stories and fun segments. Our first story takes a look at Castaic High School's campus supervisors. Our supervisors truly make a difference. I'm the lead campus supervisor, so that is I have to protect you guys, and that means I have to watch the school, I have to watch the campus, make sure there's no intruders or anybody that doesn't belong here, and yeah, that's it. Um, and I just listen and I talk and I make sure that you guys aren't fighting and any kind of thing that I hear, I, I react to. My role here on campus is to provide an extra set of eyes for the administration while you guys are out at brunch and lunch and in the classrooms, keeping you safe, making sure people who need to be on campus are on campus. How do I keep you guys safe on campus? Uh, we do a lot of perimeter checks. We do a lot of locker room checks, bathroom checks. We walk around and interact with you guys and try to get the scoop, what's going on, who said what. Things like that. So when is it? We make sure if anything is happening, we let admin know. With my, all my friends, my girlfriends. I don't know what that is. Yet. It's a dice game. How do I feel about the yard supervisors? I think that they do their job very well at keeping us safe. No volume, right? Thank you, Andy, for bringing us that story. We definitely couldn't be where we are today without them. I would have to agree with you, Xander. Moving on to our next segment, GMC's Sienna Harris brings us a new feature that focuses on weird and interesting news from all around the world. Thank you, Torn and Xander. Since this is the inaugural week of Odd News, here's how it's going to work. I, Sienna Harris, am going to try to cram in as many news stories as I can in 60 seconds. First up, the SS called Epoxy Steamship reference to movies and other form of media has recently been discovered off the coast of St. Augustine, Florida, after almost 100 years of vanishing in the same general vicinity as the Bermuda Triangle. And as it turns out, the ship was technically never missing since there was a distress sent on December 1st, 1925. Also on the odd spectrum is a New Zealand man claiming to put his award-winning beard to the test of storing the most straws. The current world record is held by a man named... Joel Strasser with an outrageous number of 312 straws. Well, I guess you could say he really put in the extra effort. In Wisconsin, a man has a custom home built just merely for the purpose of storing his Indiana Jones collection after 35 years of collecting. And just southwest in Colorado, the world's largest firework was set off. And since the clock is ticking, lastly is a strange story of how a squirrel is to blame for knocking out power to 765 people in Pennsylvania. The squirrel had apparently climbed up a utility pole and came into contact with electrical power equipment, causing an outage. That's it for today's On News. I'm Sienna Harris. Back to the studio. Thank you, Sienna. It seems crazy that a squirrel could have caused that much damage to all of those people. Yeah, that does seem pretty weird. Our next story is on the drama production team. They've been hard at work on their fall production. Torin takes a closer look. Some light dying 
The Castaic High School drama production team has been working hard all year. Today we wanted to take a closer look at what it means to be a part of the theater group and how to create a production. It takes a lot of hard work and collaboration to create a production. Um, this group of students have worked really hard together to make it happen really. So we have students doing everything from lighting design, set design, costume design, we have publicity team, um, as well as all the actors and students helping me do things like stage management by annotating the scripts. It's a huge operation and then on top of that you've got all the staff that help us do front of house and you've got all the staff that help us um, set up the spaces too. So it's a, it's a big, big operation and um, hopefully super fun one too. Creating a production takes a lot of work, not only on stage, but also behind the scenes. Let's go check in with one of our theater students and see what jobs are needed in order to create a successful production. Some of the jobs needed in order to create a production are stage manager, which is what I've been doing. As a stage manager, it is the it is my job to annotate the scripts and highlight what the actors are going to be doing, like you know, when they need to be up on stage and who's saying what. The drama team has recently been working on their upcoming show, Viral, and many students wanted to know when the next play is taking place. The next production is in March 5th and 6th, and something you can expect is to see a group of relatable teenagers that are going through a really harsh bullying incident. The theater group's first year at Castaic High School has been extremely successful. Next year, the program will expand and offer more opportunities for students. Mrs. Mystery tells us what we can look forward to. So the plan for the theatre program next year is really exciting. This year we've only had one class um, and we've had a mixture of people who are really keen on doing acting and wanting to do productions and other students who were giving it a go and trying it out. And both sets of students have done really well. But what's going to happen next year is we're going to have the chance to have a theatre elective 1A, 1B, which is going to be the general theatre elective where you can come and try it out, you can build your confidence and your creativity, you can, um, if you enjoy learning in groups and doing practical activities, that's kind of the elective for you. Um, and it's also really fun, we play loads of games and learn about basic acting skills and some scene studies and things like that. But if you're more into, like maybe you've had some theatre experience or you really want to perform for an audience and you want to learn about what it does take to put on a production, we're going to have Theatre 2 on offer as well, which is going to be a theatre class where we literally work on productions throughout the year, um, as well as learn about different theatre styles and genres and hopefully become part of a big theatre family. So if you're interested and you want to get involved, you need to email me at hmystery at heartdistrict.org or come and see me in room 504. The Castaic Theatre Group has had an exciting first year and we'll only continue to see it grow as new opportunities are introduced. Reporting for Good Morning Castaic, this is Torn Rikers. That's extremely exciting. I can't wait to see their performance next week. That will definitely be one to go and watch. Our next segment comes straight to you live from the yearbook team. Their hard work has been leading us to our very first yearbook here at Castaic High School. Over to you, Henry. Thank you, Torin. I'm here with Mr. Ruscia, the teacher of Castaic Yearbook. So tell us, what cool things can we expect from Castaic Yearbook? Well, it's going to be about 116 pages. We have a really, really cool cover design for you guys. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a history of the school. We'll have a section on staff, we'll have a section on students, we'll have sections on the clubs on campus, classes that you have academically for whether it's science or math or biology. Uh, sports will be in there too, so all, every sport will be represented. Um, and we just have some typical student life stuff, some random photos. We have best and most, like who has the, the best eyes, the best hair, things like that. Um, we have a Halloween page. We're going to have a rally page for all the rallies you've been doing. Uh, we'll have a page on the dance that you'll have this semester too. So just overall school life. Why should people buy your book? Well, for you guys, it's the very first yearbook of the school. You guys are the founding class, and this is going to be your memory of that founding class. You're going to come back to many, many years later and kind of remember and say, hey, I was here first at Castic. We helped start these traditions. We're trying to have a little bit of everything. We want everyone to be in it. So I'm not talking about just your, your, your profile picture, your class picture. We plan to have at least two other shots of each student on campus somewhere in the yearbook. So hopefully our goal is for everyone to be represented in the yearbook, not just profile pictures, not just their class pictures, but 
and other aspects of the school life. And I think it's just important because you, when you look back at these things, these are your, your keepsake, these are your mementos when you show your kids as you get older and stuff. You can flip through it and it's just really nice to have. Is there anything else you'd like to mention that I did not ask? Um, you, yeah, I, I, anyone can be, even though if you're not in yearbook, you could still be involved. So if you have suggestions and there's photos you would like to submit to be in the yearbook, please submit it to Castaic Yearbook at heartdistrict.org and we can, as a, as a yearbook class, we can discuss what the images are and what the articles are going to be or whatever you want to add. We love new ideas and we can definitely maybe put it in the yearbook. Well, I'm definitely going to be buying my yearbook. This has been Henry Swindell reporting for Good Morning Castaic. I can't believe how fast this year's flown by. I can't either. Our last segment is on upcoming movies and the Oscars. GMC's Chase Oliveira takes a look with our entertainment report. Welcome to the Good Morning Castaic Entertainment Report, where you will learn about the news of books, movies, and TV shows. The Academy Awards was just two weeks ago, and there's a lot to talk about. The movie Parasite was the first foreign film to ever win Best Picture. It was also nominated for six other awards, three of which it won. Speaking of the Oscars, Castaic High School's vice president and this show's host, Xander Grable, made a cameo appearance in award-nominated movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He might not have gotten a full close-up, but he did get seven seconds of screen time. 2020 is going to be a great year for movies. Just next month, Pixar's Onward is coming out, A Quiet Place 2, and the live-action remake of Mulan. Disney Plus is now going to be a huge platform for Star Wars TV shows. They have already wooed us with Baby Yoda and The Mandalorian, and now they're going to make a Cassian Andor series. If you don't know who he is, he was in Rogue One. We don't know very much of his show yet, but it will have K2S2 in it. It's going to be good. I'm Chase Oliveira reporting for Good Morning Castaic. Bye. Thank you so much, Chase. I can't wait to see the second Quiet Place. And with that, our second episode comes to a close. Be sure to tune in again for our third episode featuring more stories and fun segments. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at GMCastAic to see replays of our shows as well as other segments you can only find online. Well, that's all for now. See you next time, Coyotes.